With Twitch getting more and more competitive, there's always ways to make your stream more interactive and make it appear more fun and just make it unique. You don't wanna have the same follow alerts or any other type of alerts that everybody else has that they downloaded from Streamlabs or Stream Elements. They're selling those to the bulk. Everybody has these. You need to make your stream unique. And what I'm gonna teach you today is how to do this. Big up the follow. Yo, yo, yo. How cool was that? That's all done inside of OBS and StreamerBot and I'm gonna walk you through it all. And hey, if you ever wanna see that happen live, you can check me out on my Twitch link down below. It's Tomo IRL. We stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. So the first thing you want to do is head over to IRLcreate.com. That's just where I'm gonna be pasting the StreamerBot import key. Open up your StreamerBot, head over to Actions, right click and click the Import button. With that then, you wanna take the file that you downloaded and just drag it and paste it in there. So anyway, once you do that, you're gonna be greeted with this. And there's a lot going on to be completely honest with you. Some parts are completely up to yourself if you wanna do it. I just have like a little transition that would require the transition table plugin if you wanna use that. It's not mandatory. You can always just uh, click on those and just delete them. And what's also super important is that the way this is set up, the filters are on the scenes and not on the sources. So good to make sure that you have nested scenes for your camera source and for your display source, because you could also have a display and a game capture, everything like that. Just create two scenes. One scene just has your camera and then the other scene has your display capture, your game capture, whatever it is. And what you want to do is right click on those scenes and press filters. So the ones that you want to pay attention to here, I know I have other filters, but you want to pay attention to freeze, scan lines, and VHS. So freeze is using the OBS freeze filter, link is down below. And then the scan lines and VHS are both using stream effects. Again, the links will be down below if you don't have them already. Just create a standard freeze frame. So then when I press this button, we're going to freeze in place right there. Create another one, call it scan lines. If you never used stream effects before, I'm going to walk you through, it's quite basic. So just tick the box that says the load shader from a text file, click browse. You're gonna to wanna to try to find the scanline.shader. Do what you want to it. Once you do this now, it's gonna look like this. It might look a little different. Here are my settings. Helpful if you wanna get a look exactly like mine, you can change it up, you can do whatever you want. You can change the angle. Next thing is you wanna do the exact same. So tick the box, the load shader text from file, click browse and you wanna go down to VHS. Yours might not look like this straight out of the box, but again, here is my settings. So once you've done that to your camera scene, you also want to make sure that you do it to your screen scene as well. Really, really easy way to do this. So when you right click on your cam scene, you should be able to see the option copy filters. Right click on your screen scene, and then you can do the option paste filters. That way they're set up all the same way and they're named all perfectly like that. Last step now before we're done OBS is create a third scene. Inside that scene, add the two other scenes. So if you right click, press scenes, get your cam scene, get your screen scene and then position them how you want or whatever way you want to do with them. I'm sure you notice as well, but there's extra files included in that download with the StreamerBot file, which is an overlay and the transition. Again, these are completely up to you. If you want to use them, you can remove or delete anything from StreamerBot. So if you don't want, let's say the overlay, you can just remove that from here. But we're gonna walk through all of this now for you. So again, if you download the Stinger and you wanna use it, this basically just helps you set it up. Again, you do need the additional plugin, which is the transition table. Once you have that done, now it's time to jump over to StreamerBot. Get OBS to get the current scene that we're on. We're gonna set an argument for previous scene to current scene. And then we're gonna change the scene to that third scene that you just created where you've just imported those other two scenes. In here then, I know there's a lot of stuff, literally, just go and make sure that my scene names are going to be different than your scene names. Your cam scene is whatever you called your cam scene. The filter, again, whatever you called your freeze filter. And then you just want to make sure that in the activate, they're all set to visible. And in deactivate, they're all set to hidden. Again, there's nice little comments just to kind of help break it up so you're not just looking at a wall of text getting confused. So if you also remember, there was a video of me running up and doing a dab and saying thanks for the follow. Obviously, I won't be sharing that with you because that's mine and <laughs> that's me. So if you want to do something like that, by all means, you know, get in front of your green screen or whatever that you do and go ahead and record that. Once you have whatever file or anything that you want to happen, it could even just be a full face of you sliding up. It's, it's, it's you, it's your creativity, it's whatever you wanna do. Take note of how long that video is because this delay here is gonna determine how long it stays on that scene. 
So for example, my video is about three and a half seconds. So choosing 3,500 milliseconds is three and a half seconds. So that way then, once the video is done, it just goes back to where it was. Once you've changed all of this now, now we have to tell StreamerBot that when I get a follow, do that action. So if you've never done that before, it's perfectly fine. You just wanna head over to settings, head over to events and go to general. And here you can see the follows. You can just, that's probably gonna say no action selected for you, completely fine. Just click it and choose, you know, the follow alert by IRL creator if you renamed it or anything like that, just choose that. You can always test it then by just clicking the test button like this. Big up the follow, yo, yo, yo. That easy. Now, again, if you want to set up the glitching animations, that's there too. And I did also leave in the option to have the video overlay coming on. I have that on an alert scene and I have that alert scene also on that third scene. I like to keep all of my alerts inside of one nested scene and all like the little overlays, like the punches and everything like that. Just to kind of, I know where everything is, right? Feel free to add it there. If you don't want to use the little overlay, you don't have to, it's completely up to you. But this is really the simplest way I can break it down for you to get something like this up and running. It should probably take you less than 10 minutes to be completely honest with. If you do have any questions or anything like that, feel free to jump over to our Discord. The link is always down below. Hit me up, ask me a question, or me or someone from the community would be love to be able to help. My name is Tom O'IRL and thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to check out my Twitch where we stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. And we also upload videos here at least once a week. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit that bell. And hey, why don't you check out that video right there and that video right there? We'd super appreciate it.